SpaceX work hard for the first orbital flight of Starship, the colossal 120-meter-tall monster of SpaceX all the preparations for the craft seem to be ready. However, before a launch test the go-ahead, by the Federal Aviation Administration, is required in a rare sign of material progress SpaceX and the FAA have finally released, what is known as a draft environmental assessment of the company's South Texas Starship launch plans. However it's worth mentioning that this snail's pace progress of the FAA, can make SpaceX's orbital Starship launch debut be pushed all the way to 2022. Why is it taking so long, and what will SpaceX need to do in the near future? First let's take a look at, what exactly this environmental draft assessment means for. SpaceX set to be the largest and most powerful rocket in space flight history, as soon as it begins orbital launches the process of acquiring permission to launch Starship, and its super heavy booster. Out of the wetlands of the South Texas coast was never going to be easy the Boca Chica site, SpaceX ultimately settled on for its first private launch facilities. Initially meant for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, but later dedicated to BFR, now Starship. Is simultaneously surrounded by sensitive coastal habitats, populated by several threatened or endangered species, and situated mere miles from where crows fly from the city. Their temporary population oscillating from a few thousand, to tens of thousands reception and analysis of the draft, and its timing have been mixed. On one hand, SpaceX's draft AIA completed with oversight from the FAA, and help from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service gives a number of reasons, for optimism in a sign that SpaceX is taking a pragmatic approach. To the inevitable environmental review and launch license approval hurdles, standing in front of the orbital South Texas Starship launches, the company has actually pursued, what is known as a programmatic environmental assessment or P. Most importantly, that means that SpaceX's Starbase P if approved, will be more like a foundation or stepping stone that should make it easier, to start small and methodically expand the scope and nature of the company's plans for Boca Chica. Well, what is the most remarkable thing about the draft, SpaceX has proposed a maximum of 23 flight operations annually, while Starship is still in the development phase, including up to 20 sub-orbital Starship test flights, and three orbital launches or super heavy hops. Once SpaceX has worked out enough kinks for slightly more confident Starship operations, the company would enter an operational phase, that would allow for as many as five sub-orbital Starship launches, and five orbital Starship launches. As well as ship and booster landings back on land after all 10 possible launches, in other words, SpaceX's initial draft P is extremely conservative, requesting permission for what amounts to a bare minimum concept of operations, for orbital Starship launches. At a maximum of 3 to 5 orbital launches per year, a P and subsequent launch license approved, as is would likely give SpaceX just enough slack to perform basic Earth orbit launches, and no more than one or two orbital refilling tests per year. However, as an example a 5 launch maximum would almost entirely prevent SpaceX from launching Starship to Mars, the Moon, and maybe even high-energy Earth orbits without using all of its annual launch allotments. On a single mission besides these orbital flights will be supported by a gigantic launch tower, SpaceX is proposing to construct two permanent integration towers. To integrate the Starship Super Heavy launch vehicle each tower, would be approximately 480 feet tall with a 10-foot lightning rod, on top and include black cladding. The company said, they also included a map which outlines where the launch towers will be located. SpaceX would construct one integration tower adjacent to Pad A, and another adjacent to proposed Pad B, which you can see here in figure. The launch vehicle would be integrated vertically on the launch pad, Super Heavy would be mated to the launch mount followed by Starship, mated to Super Heavy. Perhaps, most importantly the draft P as proposed would unequivocally prevent SpaceX, from performing the NASA human lander system moon landings, it received an almost $3 billion. Contract to complete each HLS Starship moon landing is expected to require anywhere from 10 to 16 launches, to deliver a depot ship HLS lander, and around 1,200 tons of propellant to orbit. However, in terms of SpaceX's prospects of developing Starship as quickly as possible, that's actually a good thing, above all else SpaceX has slimmed down draft P. Should be far easier for the FAA to approve than a P pursuing permission for Starship's ultimate ambitions. Dozens to hundreds of launches annually, from the beginning in theory with this bare-bones P approved. 
SpaceX would then be able to build off the foundation, with additional environmental assessments, such as for example, expanding Starship's maximum launch cadence. Now what are the next hurdles that SpaceX needs to face? Of course SpaceX first needs the FAA to turn this first draft P into a favorable environmental assessment, not a guarantee before any of the above starts to matter based on the content of the draft itself and associated appendices. SpaceX appears to have a decent shot at receiving a finding of no significant impact, or FONSI or a mitigated FONSI determination. However SpaceX began the process of creating that draft as far back as mid-2020, followed by an FAA announcement in November of 2020. The implication is that the FAA managed to drag out a draft release process, that some have estimated should have taken only three to four months, into an arduous 10 to 15 month ordeal combined with the uphill battle. That SpaceX will have to wage for an orbital Starship launch license in South Texas, it's looking increasingly likely that Starship Super Heavy and Starbase will be technically ready for orbital launch tests. Well before the FAA is ready to approve or license them barring delays, the public now has until mid-October to read and comment on SpaceX's draft P, after which the FAA and SpaceX will review those comments, and hopefully turn the draft into a completed review. Following the release of this draft assessment, the FAA will hold virtual public hearings on October 6 and 7, before the public comment period ends. On October 18, 2021, Recently SpaceX founder Elon Musk asked for support on Twitter, shortly after the FAA released the draft document. Musk said please add your voice to the public comments, support is greatly appreciated humanity's future, on the moon, Mars, and beyond. Depends upon it, thanks Elon so can a miracle happen this year, even if the FAA were to somehow just take two months to return a best case Fonzi, clearing Starbase of environmental launch hurdles. It's hard to imagine that the agency could then turn around and approve an orbital Starship launch license, or even a one-off experimental permit in the last few weeks of 2021. Ultimately that means that nothing short of a minor miracle, is likely to prevent the FAA's environmental review and licensing delays, from directly delaying Starship's orbital launch debut. There's at least a chance that Starship Super Heavy, and Starbase orbital launch site won't be ready for orbital launches, by the end of the year. But it's increasingly difficult to imagine, that all three won't be proof tested qualified, and ready for action just a month or two from now. Thanks for watching this video, and it's a super interesting topic if you like this make sure to subscribe, if you have any crazy ideas about what we should cover in next video please comment it below, and we'll see if we can get to it so thanks again for watching and goodbye.